So this is what I wish I would have known before growing out my beard. Starting with number one is do what you can, but be patient. You cannot rush it. If you're 15 years old, just chill. Let your body catch up. If you're 20 years old, 25 years old, okay, try some derma rolling and some minoxidil. But other than this, just chill out. Be patient. Don't rush it. So number two is to let your beard grow in. Don't be afraid to try something new because at the end of the day, it's really just you who is overthinking it. No one really cares. And if you think too much about, oh, well, this person can look at me and they're not going to be attracted. Bro, who cares if they're not attracted to you? How are you going to try something? How can you... How can you get a beard that you like, a style that you like, if you never actually go out of your comfort zone and try something new? Do you understand how many years it took for me to actually grow my beard up because I was so worried about what other people thought of me. And then I was so worried about what I thought of myself. I would look in the mirror and be like, no, no, it doesn't look good, it doesn't look good. Of course, it doesn't look good. No shit, bro. It takes time. You have to let it grow in in order to get to where you want to be with it. Number three is that a beard changes your facial structure. Think about that for a second. If you have an oval face, a beard can make you have a squared off face. If you have way too squared of a face, a beard can actually soften that harshness and make it more rounded out. So for instance, this is how I looked like before and then this is how I look like now, where my jaw actually looks more squared off. Listen, I don't have a very squared off jaw, but the beard changes the facial structure. This is something that was told to me back before when I was just learning about growing my beard out. And I didn't believe it until my beard actually got longer. That's when I saw it for myself. And I see that the beard is no different than the hair, a different haircut can change the way that you look, can change the way that your, your face is and all that stuff. So the beard is no different. So for the next few, I'm just gonna condense them for the sake of time. But the first one being that when you just start growing your beard out, don't do anything. Literally, don't do anything. Just let it grow. The most that you can do is maybe wash it once a week. That's it, don't cut it, don't trim it. I'll try to make it clean. You can brush it if you want, but it's, it's so short that you don't have to brush it. So that's it. Just chill out. Enjoy the process. Again, be patient. Now, the next thing is that when it gets to about half an inch, this is when you want to start using beard oil. Because with beard oil, you're going to allow yourself to condition the hair so it doesn't itch so damn much. And it doesn't... It doesn't get damaged. You don't have all this beard dandruff. Uh, now, how do you use the beard oil? Like, how often? Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. All right, now, once you get to about, I'd say, an inch, that's when you're going to notice the real effect that it has on your facial structure. And at this point, that's when you can clean it up. You can clean up the cheeks. You can clean up the neck area here. But before you do this and before you even trim anything with the beard, you want to find someone who has the beard that you're looking for, right? the type of style that you're looking for. And you want to model what you're doing after this specific style. All right? Again, it all goes back to your hair. When you're getting a haircut or if you're cutting your own hair, usually you see something you like and then you tell your barber to cut your hair this way. Or you see something you like and then you try to cut it yourself like this. The beard is no different. You have to find something you like. You have to have a base which you are basing everything off of. Right, and then something, something to really keep in mind is that once it gets to about half an inch to an inch, pick yourself up one of these. This is a... I think it's called a boar, boar head bristle brush or just a bristle brush. Pick one up. You will not be disappointed. You will actually thank me later. Trust me. You will thank me later for sure. These things in front of me, these are things that I wish I would have known about when I was growing my beard out in the beginning. First one being the clippers. Listen, you don't need something 
special. You don't need this one specific. You don't need a wireless one. You don't need a small one. This is just what I found to work for me. Now, you're only using the clippers for your neck, for your cheeks, and for your mustache. And please, don't be this guy. Don't be this hipster that's trying to grow the mustache out. Right? It's not beneficial. It's not hygienic by any means whatsoever. Every time you smile, your lip, your teeth, everything's going to be covered by your mustache. You're always going to have to be trying to maneuver your mustache out of the way, trying to cut it specifically in a way where it can be long, but trying to be out the way. It's not going to work. You're going to be eating your hair all the time. Every time you go to kiss your partner, your hair's going to be all over the place. Like I'm telling you right now, it's a mess. Don't do it. Don't fall into that trap. It looks much better too if you keep it nice and short. Now this is what this is for right here. This is the number one guard. You cut your mustache with the number one guard. You will thank me later. All right, now again, you're using this for the cheeks and for the neck. Now, you're using it for the neck specifically, and you're not gonna use the shaver specifically for the neck because the shaver, what I found is that it causes ingrown hairs. And while yes, there are things that you can do to limit the ingrown hairs afterwards, I like to take the less is more approach. Right, I guess you could say it's a lazy approach. So again, you use this for the neck, you use it for the cheeks. Now, why do you use it for the cheeks if you're gonna use this to make it nice and crispy? We're using this for the cheeks because I found through experiences that if you trim the cheeks first and then you use the razor, that's when it just makes it much easier for you to be able to cut the hair and then make it nice and lined up. All right, now this right here in specific, I would say you have to get this specific one. Right, now, the reason I say that is because this one here is uh, it's not just a normal razor. It has one razor on the back, if you guys can see that. Now, I'm sure they have other brands, so the brand doesn't really matter here. But what matters is that you have the single razor on the back because I found this to be the most effective and the easiest one to use without any skill. Whereas you have barbers. And they use the, the single blade, which they can remove with the ones that are already preset. And these work, but you need a lot of skill and you're probably gonna butcher your, your beard and your skin along the way. And you, it's a lot of preparation and the aftercare and all that stuff. So again, less is more. This very simple. You don't need much skill and you can make it nice and crispy with that, with that blade in the back. And it's, you're not gonna cut yourself. Or at least if you do, it's a, it won't be too much, right? Now, what else? The scissors, if you're gonna do a longer beard, you have to use scissors. You know, think about a haircut, when they do a haircut, if the hair is longer, they use scissors, and then when the hair is short, when they're doing a short haircut, like a fade or something like this, barbers use this, All right? So with the beard, it's no different. Use the scissors when it comes to actually doing a longer beard style, All right? Now, Beard brush, I was already telling you guys about this. Listen, this is gonna save you. And I forgot to say that when you have the beginning stage and, and your face is very itchy, you know, the beard is very itchy, this is gonna save you, right? Later on, it's gonna get itchy as well. This is also gonna save you. Uh, save you from the beard dandruff as well, as long as you're, you know, brushing it every so often, at least once or twice a day, and getting that blood flow because it will protect you from the beard dandruff, and that's a huge, huge one, which we gotta talk about right now. And before we say this, look at this, right? This is beard oil. I don't want you to think I'm trying to sell you guys anything. This this is not a special product. I actually bought the wrong one because I usually get 100% jojoba oil, but this is a mixture of a whole bunch of different things. And I'm not gonna lie to you, it's nice. You know, every single oil that you can use for the face or for the beard is nice, but I found from my experience that pure, jojoba oil is gonna work the best it's the cheapest so you can get the most for the least amount of money and it just you only have to use a very small amount use a small amount it's not heavy it doesn't get nasty right away i should say as long as you're not using too much it just works very efficiently and then the last thing that i didn't put here is i have a shampoo now a lot of people say you have to use a specific shampoo, you know, one for the face, one for the beard because the skin under the face is different and the beard hair is different. Listen, none of this matters, all right? Throughout the years, I've tried all these different things 
And I've come to find that it really doesn't matter if you use a normal shampoo or if you use a soap or something like this. Yes, it's going to dry your beard out. But listen, I've used very natural shampoos, like ones designated for the beards. It still dried my beard out. All right, so this is where the oil comes into play. You use oil only after you wash your beard with product. Why? Because the, the product will dry your beard out. It will dry the skin out. And you use the oil to condition it, to give it some, some of the moisture that it lost. It's very simple, right? You don't use the oil every single day. If you use the oil every single day, I guarantee you, you're going to have the nastiest beard in this world. And again, you don't wash your beard every single day either with the product. You wash the, the beard with the product maybe once, max twice a week. And then the other days, what you want to do is you want to wash it with water. So when you're washing your beard with water, just make sure that you're doing it the same way that you would as if you were using shampoo. Never scratch, just massage the area. Remember, we want as much blood flow as possible because this is going to prevent any beard dandruff. And it took me years to be able to actually understand this. And last thing to remember is to use cold water or lukewarm water whenever you're washing your beard. This will also prevent the beard dandruff. What I want to say is that when you grow your beard out, it's going to change how people perceive you. Some people will see you as being dirty. Others will see you as being aggressive. Others will see you as being trustworthy. Others will see you as handsome. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. All these people's opinions of you does not matter. The most important thing about all of this is that it's changing your perception of yourself. When you look in the mirror and you see yourself, this is going to change how you see yourself, how you carry yourself. Because the same way that you get a haircut and it changes your energy, it changes the way you carry yourself, it makes you have more confidence, the beard is the same way. And I will go as far as to say that the beard has the biggest impact for a man when he actually has it on point and he sees in the mirror and he likes what he sees changes everything